Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. It is so good to be back with you. Uh, we had an awesome trip, but uh, it's good to be back. And I want to do a little bit of trying to take you with uh, on some of our trips. So we've got some videos that we'll uh, show this morning. Of, of some things that I think you'll find uh, encouraging and a blessing. Uh, we've been looking at Jesus' vision for his church. Uh, and I so appreciate everybody who just stepped up uh, to serve over the last two weeks when we've been uh, out of the country. I appreciate Adam's focus on the gospel as the foundation of the church, that we must embrace the identity of Jesus. Jesus as he really is, not as we uh, might imagine him to be, uh, that if we attempt to add anything to the finished work of Jesus on our behalf, that we nullify the grace of God. I appreciate David's emphasis on the fact that we're all called to be missionaries right here, right where God has us, engaging our own community with the gospel. And I'm glad that this church is doing just that. Uh, often in seemingly small, inconspicuous, ordinary ways, yet in the power of the Holy Spirit. And God is doing great things through your simple obedience and faithfulness. So church, keep it up. God is at work. Now today I want to look at the church on mission. And I want to especially do a focus on the global mission that Jesus gave to us, his followers. I want to affirm that we are all called to mission right here, right where we live. We don't need to cross a large body of water to be considered a missionary. But I believe that when we work to maintain a global mindset for the advance of the gospel, we will be better equipped to do missions here, right where we are. And we will be encouraged to engage in what God has called us to do, right here, right where we are, as we look at what God is doing globally. It's bigger than here. So let's pray, and then we'll dive right in. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for uh, just the awesome privilege it was to be uh, on the other side of the planet and seeing some of the things that you're up to around the world in different people groups. Thank you for that uh, privilege and that opportunity. We, we pray right now your blessing uh, on those that are serving you around the world in different people groups, in unreached people groups, in, in dangerous places. Lord, we specifically want to lift up uh, Jason and Jen and their family to you. Lord, we want to lift up uh, uh, Tracy and his family, uh, Dave and his family, Noon and his family. Lord, we pray your blessing on them, the other missionaries that are serving alongside them. We, we pray that you would encourage their hearts in you and pour out your blessing on them. Uh, use them for the advance of your church in Thailand and among the Isan people. Uh, we, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew 28, verse 18, Jesus came to and said to them, All authority on heaven, in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Make disciples of all nations. Jesus is building his church with people from every tribe, every people, every nation. That's his heart. It's been his heart. You read through the Old Testament when he gave the promises to Abraham. I'm going to bless you, and in you all the nations of the earth will be blessed. God has a heart for the nations. Jesus is with us as we make disciples of all the nations, and the gates of hell 
will not be able to stand against the global advance of the good news of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, Jesus said, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. You will be my witnesses starting right here, right now, right where you live, then in your surrounding neighborhood, in your community, then on the wrong side of the tracks, to people who are different from you, socially, culturally, people you might not normally associate with, then to the other side of the planet, to the end of the earth. Now, I have a renewed respect for our missionaries that have gone out. Uh, we just got home Thursday night after over... 40 hours of travel from the time we were picked up at our hotel in Koh Samui, I think that's how they say it, uh, through five airports, four flights, totaling about 18 and a half hours of flight time and about 18 and a half hours of layovers in different airports, we slept hard Thursday night. <laughs> And I was up early the next morning, and I was feeling pretty good. I was like, hey, I'm okay. I got a good night's sleep. I'm, I'm ready to go. Until about noon, which in <laughs> Thailand is 2 a.m., and I could hardly stand up or keep my eyes open. I had to take a nap. But jet lag from international travel is just a small part of the challenge of ministry in another culture, in another language, with another people group. Uh, we were at a restaurant, and uh, we were going to sit down and, and eat, and Deanna wanted to order a, a Thai iced tea. Anybody ever had a Thai iced tea? Spectacular. If you go to a Thai restaurant, order a Thai iced tea, it's it's kind of this orange gradient color. It's beautiful. They're, they're really good. Full of sugar. Um, <laughs> but we'd had some of these, and, and she thought, you know, man, that'd be really good. Normally, it's, it's poured over ice. She said, that would be really good if it was blended, like a frappe style, you know, ice drink, you know, the, the, in the blender. So we asked, you know, I'd, I'd like a Thai iced tea, but could, <coughs> could we get it blended? Like, frappe, like, we're trying to communicate what we want. And not understand. She pulls somebody else over who speaks maybe a little better English. We explain. She's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she leaves, and then we think, okay, we finally, we figured out, we communicated what we wanted. Uh, we sit down at the table. We, pretty few minutes later, she comes back with a, a Thai iced tea, traditional Thai iced tea poured over ice. We said thank you, and we enjoyed that, but it wasn't what we had. Just to order a drink in a different language that we don't speak, that we're not fluent in. Imagine trying to explain biblical truth, explain the gospel in a language that, that you don't, that's not your first language. Not only a different language, but a different culture. You've got different uh, history, different background, different reference points. Uh, when we attended Bethlehem Church with Jason and Jen, uh, Pastor Chalam asked if, uh, if I had a word that I wanted to share with the congregation. And briefly, he said, five or ten minutes. I took five. Um, so I'll share that with you. Uh, and then Jason, Jason translated for me. I just spoke in English. And... And as, as we did that, it just struck me how difficult it is to communicate biblical truth in another language. So let's go ahead and watch that video. <laughs> Oh. 
14 sentence, where Jesus' disciples were hungry and they picked grain and ate it, and the religious leaders said, You're breaking our tradition to breaking the Sabbath.
พระเยซูจะไม่ดับไฟที่ลิบีโอ้งจะไม่ดับเพราะไว้ที่เราจะว่าโอ้งไม่ดับหมายถึงจิตใจของคนที่บนกว่าโอ้งจะไม่ทำงานว่าพระเยซูเป็นที่มีความเป็นจริง Jesus with all power cares about you cares about me cares to live that I'm not the one who can do it. I'm not the one who Challenge in uh, <laughs> communication there uh, in a different language. I'm just so impressed with uh, with uh, Jason's mastery. Jason and Jen both their mastery of the language and being able to to communicate difficult difficult things like that in uh, in not their native tongue. Uh, so super uh, super cool. Uh, One of the things that was interesting after that, on the way home from church, I got thinking, and it's talking about Jesus as King of Kings, and Thailand is a kingdom ruled by a king. Uh, there's pictures of the king, the royal family uh, posted everywhere in the country. Uh, there's images of the king on all their money, uh, and. It is considered disrespectful to point at the pictures of the king or the royal family. Uh, if you drop a coin, do not step on the coin to try to stop it from rolling away. You are <coughs> stepping on the image of the king, and that's considered extremely offensive. Uh, on the way home from church, I asked Jason. You know, I, I hadn't thought about it ahead of time as I was sharing. Uh, with the church, but what does it look like to talk about Jesus as King of Kings in a country that has a literal, physical, uh, highly respected and honored King? I have a whole new level of respect for these guys as uh, as they speak Thai with the local Thai people. Uh, Jason and I went to visit uh, a, a blind grandma is is how she's known. Um, And she has, I believe, asthma, and she's been very sick with pneumonia. And uh, he he spent some time just reading her some scriptures, and uh, and we prayed with her. And here's just a little clip of uh, our our travel where she lives, and uh, and some of our time with her. So let's go ahead and show those two uh, video clips. Yes. Well, one of the people who died, 
แต่จิตใจของเราจะขึ้นไปสว่างท่าเราพึ่งผ่านในพระองค์เมื่อเรามีกับพระองค์จะมีความชื่นชมยินดีแท้ๆเพราะว่าพระเจ้าเป็นผู้ยิ่งใหญ่แต่พระเจ้าเป็นความรักจะเสียงมัวดูได้แต่ไม่ได้ก็ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ก็ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ That it took me a second, but it's like, hey, that's a that's a word that <clears throat> that I know. It's a Hebrew <laughs> word. It's a word that word we use uh, universally across uh, Christianity. She's a believer and just a beautiful spirit. I don't know if you were able to catch Jason's translation of some of what uh, what she said, uh, but that God cares for her soul, and uh, she's she said she'd like to read the Bible, but she can't because she can't see. Uh, but she spends a lot of time in prayer. Uh, One of their greatest challenges uh, for Jason and Jen specifically is raising their family in a foreign culture, uh, where uh, Jen's a stay-at-home mom. Uh, she's she's the homeschool teacher. Uh, she has very little uh, opportunity for connection or fellowship with other believers. There is a, a missionary fellowship that is about a little over an hour away from their home that they'll go to on occasion. Uh, kids can play with some other missionary kids. Uh, the moms can can connect, uh, but that's that's a prayer need. There's some changes in that group that that may or may not uh, be able to continue. Uh, so be praying. That's one of the ways that we can be praying. And I've got a little clip of uh, Jen just sharing her heart and some of the prayer requests. So let's uh, let's look at that. Uh, Jen, just to put you totally on the spot, uh, what would you say the the most Your, your biggest challenge as a missionary wife, mom, um, woman on the field? Um, yeah, I think, I mean, I'm a stay-at-home mom here, so yeah, stay-at-home mom. We spend a lot of time at home, and yeah, it's the same, it's the same here, and we get to homeschool as well, so that I, I didn't realize the time that we all take when we first came with Mariah, she was little, so didn't homeschool yet, and I could study language a lot, many, many hours, but that has almost, you know, not completely stopped, but um, I have to focus on the home as priority right now, and sometimes that is difficult because, um, yeah, my progress is just slower than I would like it to be, but that's my um, season of life right now. <laughs> um, Just some uh, some practical ways we can be pr uh, praying for their family and their uh, their service there. Uh, in spite of the difficulties that they face, Jesus is building His church. Jesus is at work, both here and around the world, building His church. And this happens through the simple faithfulness of His people, proclaiming His truth. Developing relationships with people, being a light, showing love, genuinely caring for the people around them. Jesus is building His church. 
And we can have boldness and confidence that when we proclaim Jesus, Jesus is building his church because he said, I will build my church. In Acts chapter 13, in Antioch and Pisidia, after uh, Paul and Barnabas were proclaiming Jesus and being rejected by the Jewish leaders, in Acts 13 verse 46, it says, And Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly, saying, It was necessary that the word of God be spoken first to you, since you thrust it aside and judge yourselves unworthy of eternal life. Behold, we are turning to the Gentiles. For the Lord has commanded us, saying, I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. Listen, and when the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing and glorifying the word of the Lord. And as many as were appointed to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was spreading throughout the whole region. We can have confidence that God's word will not return void, but will accomplish what he sends it out to do. We can speak the truth about Jesus with all confidence, knowing that faith comes through hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. We can be confident when we proclaim truth to unbelievers that God will use His truth to bring people to respond to His good news by believing the gospel, trusting completely in Jesus. Now I want to share with you the testimony of a young Thai man that God is using to plant a church there in Isan. Nung and his wife Sarah are working with some other missionaries that he mentions, Tracy and Dave and their families. And this clip is a little over 15 minutes long, uh, but I think you'll find it encouraging. Uh, and by the way, uh, you'll hear uh, Jen, who's not in the picture, but she's doing, uh, his, his goal was to try to share his testimony in English. And he kind of started out that way, but it's difficult. So uh, Jen is doing a lot of translating for him. Um, before the video clip starts, he shared uh, that when, his, when he was young, his father taught him how to fight. It, it sounds like his father was a fighter. And uh, so he fought a lot. And he got into drugs and games and girls. And he said, I was a bad guy. And I'll, I'll let him tell you uh, his story. <laughs> And then uh, when I done off uh, school, mm -hmm. high school, high school, oh, okay. high school is over. I I came to I went to school in Bangkok. Yeah. Uh, the university yeah. Yeah. University. Yeah. 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 and uh, go to work in the pub music mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people come uh -huh. to me every time, every night, yeah. <laughs> every night, every night. And I feel, I feel full mm. and bored, bored. Yeah. 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 yeah, so you just born as girls, right? Like mm. Kind of had, maybe had a spill, like, mm. yeah. I think that's what I have a question. Why I am born in the world? What is my purpose? Yeah. Uh -huh. What is the goal for human? Yeah. What is the goal? Um, <laughs> 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 and I, I'm 
ไปที่อื่นเลยต้องอยู่ในห้องนอนก็ต้องอยู่แบบแล้วก็คิดว่าชีวิตคืออะไรผมไม่ได้เชื่อศาสนาพุทธ I never heard God before ไม่เคยรู้จักพระเจ้าเลยเสียงที่อยู่บนตึกนั้นที่พูดกับผม 
Like, what he heard from the girl that came in while you found on Google, like, they all oh, managed yeah. to get them out. Yeah. Oh, God, this is weird. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find food. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
แต่ช่วงเวลาสามสี่เดือนผมอ่านทั้งคำพีในอินเทอร์เน็ตแต่เมื่อไปที่ระดับไหนเขาสอนที่เหมือนกับพระคัมภีร์ไม่เหมือนกันแต่ผมคิดว่าผมก็ไม่รู้จักคือสกัดด้วยผมก็เลยเรียนเรียนพระคัมภีร์แล้วก็เรียนรู้ที่คือสกัดนะเนี่ยหลังจากนั้นสองปีผมอยู่ที่นั่นสองปีแล้วก็เข้าใจว่าคริสตจักรนั้นแบบสอนพาสการ์ดผมก็เลยคิดว่านี่ไม่ใช่ข่าวเสียผมต้องออกแล้วผมย้ายอีกคริสตจักรนั้นย้ายไปอีกผมคิดว่าผมต้องมีคริสตจักรที่สอนอยากถูกต้องมีบางคริสตจักรที่ไม่ได้สอน Prosperity Church แต่ไม่ได้เน้นความขอบใจ Primary 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 Oh so like they might not teach There are some churches he found like wouldn't teach the prosperity gospel but they were humble Okay ผมต้องการเห็นคริสตจักรที่มีความรักความขอบใจแล้วก็สอนขาวเสริมที่ถูกต้อง Is loving, humble, and tough. The true gospel. I have a desire that I want to be a Christian. I know that Christian is not easy. Don't worry. Don't worry. His dreams. Don't worry. 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 หลังจากนั้นผมอยู่ในที่สุดหลายหลายที่รวมทั้งหมดประมาณเจ็ดปีผมผมออกจากที่สุดเพื่อบุกโดนที่สุดและไม่รู้ทำไมถึงเลือกที่การสินบ้านเกิดแต่อันที่ฐานหลายเดือนบ่ายไปเรื่อย about two years two years for for painting the church just pay me bye and he he don't want to leave back he want to Stay in back up, but I think you should go. You should go. Uh-huh. And then we uh, came to Garrison and saw Jason and Tracy mm-hmm. there and joined to team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I I start the church about three years ago. Yeah. 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 That is my test to me. Good job! That is Noon and his wife, uh, Sarah. Um, her story is very different. She grew up in a Christian home. She was very active in her uh, campus ministry, uh, did all the right things, and, and over time realized that she... She was trying to impress God by her works, and she didn't come humbly and just receive the gift. So she also met Jesus and had her sins forgiven, and uh, and uh, they got together. And, and now, uh, so you have you have broken sinners made new, made new on the inside, and you. You heard him talk about, I didn't know what was happening, but my heart was changing. My desires were changing. The girls who came to him, instead of being interested in them, he felt bad for them. Uh, he didn't know what was happening to him. God, a guy who was ready to, to end his life and jump off a building, 
God spoke to him. God pursued him. Uh, through the internet, uh, God reached him with his word, with his truth. And <laughs> just think of uh, the, the sadness of, oh, well, the only church I knew of is a Catholic church. So I went there, and they, didn't, they couldn't help me. And then went to another church that was a prosperity gospel church that was not teaching uh, the biblical gospel. And he was... Just as a simple believer in Jesus, he was able to see that this doesn't line up with God's Word. What they're teaching, this, this isn't what God's Word says. So he's searching for a, a church that teaches the Bible. And now God's called him from Bangkok in the south of Thailand up to the middle of nowhere in northeastern uh, Thailand to plant a church uh, in, among the Isan people. God changes us. God transforms our desires. He uses broken sinners like us to advance His kingdom and bring Him much glory. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The way He builds His church, according to Romans 10, uh, it's outlined in reverse in Romans 10. Faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? You heard him say, I've never heard this before. How are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach? Unless they are sent. Faith comes from hearing. And unbelievers hear the word preached when someone goes out to preach. The one who goes is sent by others. And all this is driven by prayer. Matthew 9, Jesus, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them. Because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send laborers into his harvest. So church, keep a global perspective Pray and pray and pray and speak of Jesus wherever you are and give and send and go and speak of Jesus wherever you go. Isaiah 49 verse 6, I will make you as a light for the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Father, thank you for what you're doing around the world. Thank you for what, you're, what you've done in Nun and Sarah's lives. Thank you for what you're doing among the Isan people. Thank you that you are building your church and you're using broken people like us to do it. God, encourage our hearts in you today. Stimulate our hearts to be praying for our brothers and sisters on the other side of this planet. Give us discipline and diligence to lift them up in prayer, to give. To be used by you in sending to, to support and encourage those that we have sent out. And Lord, maybe you're calling some of us to go. Give us ears to hear your voice. And just the humble obedience to go where you call us to go. To be an ambassador. To be a disciple maker wherever it is that you place us. Right here in San Pete County. Wherever we go. May we bring glory to your awesome name for you, O Lord. In Jesus' name.